You know, Janelle, you being way too cute with this question. Yo, listen, the street's been talking for a minute. The street's been talking, B. They said an MJF bitch your style, B. Wrong, 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 wrong. And he just bit it. B. Did you just Pac Man him? Yes. 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 I mean, I mean. Well, Jobber Nation! <laughs> Jobber Nation! You gotta come back in. Oh, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another episode of JTT. Jobber oh, Tears Lounge. Um, Jobber Nation! Some... <laughs> it knocked me out of all people. Oh, all right, man. you ready, Janelle? Go ahead. Jobber oh. Nation, welcome to... The Jabba Tears Podcast Lounge. As always, I'm Janelle from HR here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black. And this this individual, we literally, I think, what, how long have we been doing the podcast? Two and a half, three years almost? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is probably the, the guest that we've been wanting to have <laughs> for the longest. And not because, you know, we've had really, really great guests, Bossy Boss Black, but this individual. <laughs> Is I honestly, he, to me, he's a part of our foundation as a podcast. I think it's our foundation into the indies because he he's one of the first I can say for myself that I seen, and I was just like, "This, I, I love me a good heel." Yo, you have to boo him, B. You <laughs> have it. to boo him. If you cheer him, that's an insult. Yo, I never cheer this man. I always boo him. I don't, you on the side. don't listen to him. All but the time, anyone that knows that has been on here, I don't introduce them. I'm going to let the gentleman, the man of the hour himself, introduce themselves to the viewers and listeners. So let the fans know who you are. I mean, they if they don't know, then I don't know what Rocky If you don't know, know, you're about to know the All Father Wrestling's richest prize, the technical tormentor himself. The man known as and truly DC, Mr. Darius Carter. Big match yeah. Carter, championship Carter, main event Carter. Hey. Call me what you will. Just make sure you're calling my name. This is what I do. And I'm glad to be here. I'm hey, glad man. to be here. We are so glad for you to join us. Finally, I, literally, I like, we've had a, a list of people. We were like, yo, we need, we need, we need. And we were like, we got to get Darius on. Like, I don't. We never knew like why or how, but everything happens for a reason, and this is the moment we've been waiting for. So, I'm gonna let the let's just jump right into it. You started talking about stuff, so I kind of triggered you on the question. So we're just gonna jump into that because I just feel like it was just such a good topic. <laughs> so, in the wrestling, everyone knows in the business things are copied, things these are things are repeated, but certain particular things. Of a, of a professional wrestler to be taken and not the person be taken seriously. I want you to explain how have you felt dealing with the politics of independent wrestling? Because I feel like you are the for, you're at the forefront of that shit all, all the time. You know what, Janelle? You're being way too cute with this question. Yo, listen. The street's been talking for a minute. The street's been talking, B. <laughs> They said an MJF bitch your style, B. Wrong, 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 wrong. And he just bit it. B. Did you just Pac Man him? <laughs> yes. 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 I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I was trying to let her go, but, but since we but since we here. Now, you, now you everybody know what? How you it. dealing with that? How you dealing with that? <laughs> <laughs> look, look, let me put it to you like this. I don't even have to say anything because you say it for me. You say it for me. You say it for me. At the, at, look, look, everybody, we, we're all professional wrestlers, okay, that, or that inside the business that we have somebody that we uh, idolize, somebody that we look after, somebody that we emulate. We're all emulating somebody. We're all emulating things that uh, we find iconic. And maybe he finds me iconic. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's, listen, to me, it's a sign that I'm doing something right when people are biting off your thing, when people are taking off your thing, when people are, are, are when people see your plate and have their own plate and their plate. I'm not saying their plate has more food or is better, but they have a different plate. They just have a, and they instead of eating their food, they want your food and they picking off of yours. You know, it, to me, 
You know what I mean? That that says it right there. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is I have been at the front of a lot of uh, of uh, political and, and backstage and things that honestly it shouldn't even have to be discussed on on in, uh, on a podcast discussed in situations like this. We should be beyond this. We should be you know it should be our talent. It should be our character in and out of the ring that dictates. How far you get, it should be your longevity. It should be the, the quality of work that you put out. I'm proud of the quality of work that I put out. And, and honestly, if I see something that somebody else is doing, I, I can praise them on it. I don't want to take your stuff. I don't want to take somebody else's thing. You know what I mean? Much less take your thing and then put you down. You know, take your thing and then try and, and, and stick one in you. You know what I mean? Like that, that to me is the stuff that I'm above. And that's the stuff that I'm not going to lower myself to. But at the end of the day, if you see something that you like, something that you you realize and you understand is of top quality, and then you try and, and take it your own and take it for yourself, it speaks for itself. People are going to tell you. I don't have to sit here and tell you. I don't have to sit here and and, and, write, and give you a monologue on, on what's happening or why it's happening. We know why it's happening. Because I was doing something, it was taking off, it was doing really well. People just didn't like me. So they tried to take something and put it on someone that they did like. And, and, and that's how it is. And that's the game. You know, the business, the game got me in that respect. And, and what are you going to do about it? You're going to sit there, you're going to complain, you're going to tweet, you're going to comment, or you're going to up your game? Are you going to make yourself better? You know, so I, t I went on UK tours to improve myself and to go even better than the thing that you emulated. You know what I'm saying? I, I something the, the Carter you took was the Carter from 2016, you know, 2015, 2016. You know, the car that Carter, I'm above that Carter. That Carter, I'm above the Carter of 2020. Every year I'm getting better. I'm not reliant on 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 the same material. I don't need to you to take cheap barbs or cheap cheap jabs to get ahead. My stuff is authentic. I'll tap into your emotion. I don't need to to take the easy way out with my words. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to 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 take the to low road on things. My, I'm gonna come at you intellectually. I'm not gonna come at you in a primitive, basic, easy. Anyone can do it. That's not how I do things. So I'm hard to emulate. You can try and take the idea, but you can't take the execution. So that's why I'm mm. not. I'm, I'm not. I'm really not. So that was the most mature, right? most media savvy, most beautiful monologue you just dropped. How the hell did you come to that point to be able to say that? Because you weren't like that five years ago no. when it was happening. You weren't like that maybe three years ago. What, what changed or, or, or what? who talks to you or what happened that you were like, you know what? I'm going to be what you, everything you just said. Yeah. No, you're right. Uh, it, uh, it's experience. You have to go through it. And I really went through it. So let's not, you know, pretend like this was something that came easy. This isn't something that, uh, you know, I just walked into. I had to really go through it. I had to dig through the trenches. I had to lose bookings to not get booked, to not get looked at. Didn't matter if I sent a resume because you already had your idea of what I was. You already thought I was something. I, I had to climb out of the well. To, to make you even see me, you know, eye to eye. You know what I'm saying? Whereas you would, other people you may jump around for. You may, for me, you're not, I had to come through the dirt. I had to dig. I had to scratch and claw. And that's why I do count my achievements. That's why I do count how many championships I held 16. So I'm proud of myself because I had to get myself here. I had to get myself here. I'm not going to say nobody helped me because that's not true. I had trainers. I had mentors. I had people looking after me. Richie Rotten from, uh, you know, from BWO. I had Preacher Phineas James, Nunzio. I had Magic. Uh, so I had people that definitely looked out for me. And I was able to wrestle it beyond when, in 2010 when I was – Two years into the business, at that time, Beyond was bringing in the best guys in the world, and I was in there two years in wrestling those people. So I, I appreciate that. I did have aid along the way, um, and I think there was some aid that I had to talk to um, along the way so that I didn't put myself um, in, in politically compromising situations. Uh, because that's the game right now. It's not about how good you are. It's not. It's not. It's just not. I've been good for a while. 
I've been great for a while. It's not about that. It's not about, oh, Darius is TV ready. Darius has the look. Darius has the moveset. Darius has the entrance. Like, I'm checking boxes left and right. Like, I'm not even saying it to be arrogant. I'm not saying it to be conceited. I'm saying it out of conviction and and out of the fact, out of pure a passion and devotion to the craft that I'm performing in. Like, I, I'm checking boxes. Like, when's the last time you've seen a match of mine that did not hold up to par? What match did you see of mine that 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 was inefficient? I'm out here putting out the work, and Classic. I'm just wanting my work to talk. And that's Winnicott. why I'm not trying to hurt people's feelings out here. But if you ask a question, I'm going to answer. Mm. Mm. I think that mm. is fair. Oh. I had to get here. It's hard. Like I said, it's it's really, and that's the thing. Like, listen, like people go through it in different ways. You know what I mean? But for me, like literally, there was a while where I felt like there was nothing that I was going to be able to do to get out of the hole that I was in. But I was still put on my gear, and I still showed up. I still put on my suits. Still put on my gear. You wouldn't have known it. Because that's stuff that I was holding in and, and, and keeping inside for me. You know what I'm saying? But I, I had to wait. I had to know that I was the odds were against me. I knew that the stack was against me. I knew that I had people that were looking at me, waiting for me to fail, begging, praying on my downfall, getting on your hands and knees and clasping your hands together and hoping that I didn't have another day of success. And there's people that are out there that really prey on you like that. I didn't realize I had people that preyed on me like that. But there are people that prey on me like that. There, there might be somebody watching on this now wanting me to slip up and, and prey on my downfall. But that's not how I live. I'm not that walk on eggshells type of guy. I'm Darius. I'm going to be Darius. And I'm going to give you quality. You're going to pay and you will receive in kind. I don't, I, you know, I'm a businessman and I don't play that, man. You're going to get it from me. You're always going to get it from me. Any promoter I've I worked for, you're going to get the whole nines from me inside the ring and outside the ring. So let's start asking the people I work for how I am. Let's ask the people that I've been able to carry their brand. Let's ask them how I am. Let's ask Joe Akeem how I, how I am. Like, let's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm doing what I have to do. And anybody that's not giving me that opportunity, I'm telling you, with that day you do, you're going to look back and be like, wow, like, I know it was like that. I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. People say to me, I didn't know you were like that. I'm like, huh. How was you, supposed to? you know what I mean? People who haven't even talked to me. I'm telling you, oh, I didn't know it was like that. I didn't. I, I thought you were this way. Crazy. So talk a little bit about what got you into the business. I mean, I know it's the most typical question, but specifically, like, when did that change for you happen where you're like, this is uh, this is life right now? Like, outside of your regular nine to five, you know, everyone has a job thing. How did, did wrestling choose you or did you choose wrestling? Oh, uh, I feel like it's a little bit of both. I mean, it, wrestling can choose you, but then you still got to choose wrestling back in a way. You know, you have to accept it. There's a lot of people that, you know, wrestling kind of chose and it just didn't. You know, they didn't choose it back. So, you know, that, that's that's a that's a good question. For me, I feel like I as long as I can remember, I was a wrestling fan, you know, from from seven, from six, from five. I was always loving the pageantry. I always loved theater. I always loved art and wrestling. Just put it all together It put that it put the physicality, the competition, anything that you're going to want. You know, wrestling had it for me. Wrestling had it for uh, my great grandmother, who I would watch it with. So that's how I fell into it. Uh, and then, you know, once I the first opportunity I had, uh, which was uh, September uh, September 2008, I, I started going to college. And then November of 2008 was the first opportunity for me to start training, and I jumped right on it. So it was like, hey, look, man, like you know, I had somebody I was working with, um, and he was like, listen, he's like. You know, you see your passion and stuff. Let's let's come come to a school. I was like, all right. You know, it wasn't any, you know, question about it. And I went, and that's how I was doing it for years. I was going to college, so I was I was doing I was working um, working a job. I had classes that I was going to, and I was training. So nice. you know, I could, yeah, it. so yeah, so and that, like I said, my hustle is silent. So I wasn't out there, you know, broadcasting everything that I was doing. But you know, you, you you're waking up. You go to your class, you know, your 810 class, psychology class, and then, you know, then you go eat, 
uh, and then maybe you know you do a couple hours at your job, and now you do one more class, and then you go off to uh, training, and then you get back. Let's say at twelve o'clock, you know, and now you're studying until two in the morning, two thirty in the morning. Go to sleep, wake up again to do the whole jingo. You know, five days out of the week. So, and I was eighteen, nineteen at the time. So, um, discipline. You know, uh, discipline has always been an important part of my life. And I think that goes back to that question you asked, Wilkins, about, you know, how I got to now versus three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, where I would say different things. It's just discipline and it's experience. And you just have to realize that, that you know, you have to be better. You know what I mean? Even if the world around you isn't getting better, you have to get better. And that's what my message of change is about. Like, I am constantly changing and constantly improving upon myself because, you know, I can't let I can't have armor that you can penetrate because you you're you're waiting for my armor to, to, to have a chink in it. You're waiting for me to crack. You're waiting for me to decompose. And, and, and I cannot allow that. That's up to me to allow you to get to me. So I have to continue to to keep rolling on people biting and, 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 and chirping and, and stealing and disrespecting. That's going to be a part of life. And it's only going to get more. Uh, more so, it's only going to improve in that respect as I climb up the ladder. I'm not going to be the most liked guy because I'm not a gallivanter. I'm not out here kissing feet. That's not how I do things. I'm not out here doing things behind closed doors uh, to to get myself ahead. I'm not out here doing things uh, in, a, in, in closets, per se, that if you open them, uh, you're setting me back several years. I'm not in that position because I don't, I don't need to hold skeletons in my closet. So... It, it is what it is. I'm out here doing what I have to do, and I'm going to keep doing that, and that's going to rub people the wrong way because I'm not someone that they put their uh, mark on. I'm not somebody that they approved of. That's just the way it is. There's not a lot of people that could say that they approved of me and got me to that next spot, and if they do come out of nowhere, I'm going to be interested to see who they are because I know that day will come where it's like, oh, I, yeah, Darius, I remember seeing you, and I supported you. I, I can't wait for that day. Because everybody has it. I cannot wait for the day that all of my friends come out to congratulate me. It's going to be lovely. It really will. <laughs> it's going to be a party. Can't wait. I'm, and I'm going to have, it's going to be a celebration. I'll tell you. <laughs> so looking back when you started training and you, you know, you went through the trenches, how, when was the birth of Darius Carter? Like the Darius the Carter we know now, granted has evolved. And has done so many different things throughout the years. But when was that? What was that birth moment like where you was just like, this is the character. This is how I want to do it. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be this guy. Yeah, it, it definitely took. Um, I don't want to say it took a while because I always had an idea. Character was always important to me. So even when I first started training, even like my first match, character was always important to me and how I would uh, present myself. Um, you know, I, there was always money involved with my character just because I was, you know, I was blessed to do well for myself at a young age. So it was kind of and, and I had to do it, by the way. It's not like I, uh, you know, had a silver spoon or like I was leeching off mom or leeching off dad. I didn't have anybody to do that. I just was taught. My mother taught me a very strict uh, work ethic that she followed herself. So all I saw was her working. And I just wanted to work. I was never a guy that was, I was never the kid that was just staying at home, like doing nothing. Like even if I had my video games, I knew when to play them. You know what I mean? I still was going out and I was still active and I was always, you know, hanging around or, or doing something to pass the time to stimulate myself. So I was always about stimulation. I was never a guy that was bored. I was never like, oh, I'm bored. or Oh, I have nothing to do. I've never said that. There's always something to do. You know, I can never get to everything. You know what I mean? That's the type of life that, that I wanted to set up for myself. Um, so I'm blessed to have that, to have a, 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 you know, a beautiful black mother that was able to educate me, you know, really a lot of the time, you know, and she did a lot of it on her own. You know what I mean? Where she was able to uh, instill the values in me that I, I don't even question those values. Like I couldn't I, I couldn't turn them off if I wanted to. Like the consistency, the work ethic that could never leave me. I can never not do that. And that's something that will be passed down if nothing else is consistency and work ethic and true to self. And that's the thing is I've been true to self. And I think some people are seeing that. 
from, you know, years ago. I think maybe some people were waiting for me to change or whatever into something that I wasn't. And I've been the same guy. I, you know, I've been true to me. I've evolved, but I've been at the core still Darius, still Darius, whereas mm. a lot of other people, 2015, oh, they were this person. In 2017, oh, they're that person. Me, no. My, my, <laughs> my record is, is, again, consistent is the word that I like to use consistent and i feel like the the most consistent quality players in any game uh are underestimated they're or they're underset they're understated because they're just good for so long that you're used to it you're accustomed to it and, and when you're accustomed to excellence you don't appreciate the excellence for what it is so Ooh, that's a bar that's a bar i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm out here doing this. I'm out here. I mean, I'm, I'm I, and I care so much. And anybody that knows me knows how much this means to me, how much um, this sport means to me. And that's how that character kind of manifested. So I kind of started off like, you know, look, not learning who I was, but learning who you are in front of the camera. Cause it's two different things. And, mm -hmm. you know, and money was involved, but I was like, kind of like young money, like, you know, no one in the corner has swagger like us. Like, that was me, you know. That was the Darius of like 2008, Damn. 2009. That's very, like, I think that's different. That's a different it, 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 it is different. And it was genuine because that's where I was when I was 18, 19. You know what I mean? I was just, I was kind of, you're kind of feeling yourself and your, your, your things are going good for you and you're young. You know what I mean? And you're going to college and you, you, you know, at some point the hustle's getting to you and you just like, yo, I am the hustle. And that's kind of how I was feeling. <laughs> yeah. And I was at 1920. I was definitely feeling that. I can admit that. I mean, looking back, I, I can imagine, you know, how some people could have definitely thought of me their first impression of me. I mean, my, uh, it's funny because I was watching that Ms. Um, WWE 24 and Miz had mentioned it leaving a bad first impression. And I was like, you know what? I was like, maybe I did. You know, I'm, I'm sure I left a lot of bad first impressions just because I'm so outgoing and I'm so, like, extroverted. And it, it could be a lot for people. And they're just mm -hmm. like, what is, what is going on with this? this? There's so many different colors to this painting. I can't even look at it right now. And I, and I think that's how I, I was. I think to some people I still am. I think I'm a, a lot more... Um, not reserved or, or subdued even, but I think I'm just a lot more contained. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Which is just a part of experience and age and wisdom. But I was definitely throwing all types of things when I was 18, 19, 20. So I, I get it. But if you ever sat down and talked to me, you realize that there was a real man there that really was trying to learn. It was really hungry to improve upon his craft. And there were very few people, even when I first started, that sat down and talked to me like that. You know, there mm. were very few people. There wasn't like I was. You know, there was people that looked at me and saw me a certain way, but there were few people that would sit down and be like, "Hey, Darius, man, like, like, talk to me, man. Like, what's going on? How you feel? Like, tell me about yourself, or talk to me about you, or however you would approach me. You know, like I to this day will always value someone that approaches me because I'm not somebody that gets approached a lot on a on a, a moderate uniform type way a lot of times people approach me with with a with a preconceived notion and one way or the other is there's not a lot of straight narrow and I, I try to approach people like i try to treat them like a straight and narrow um maybe they don't see it that way but i really do approach people on a similar front and then how you respond is how i kind of bob and weave and respond i'm a very uh reactive and natural person um i, I realize that's not something a lot of people are uh, a lot of people don't catch vibes well. They don't catch, they don't groove well. The groove, I feel like, has diminished over the past many years. And I and I don't know whose fault that is, but it's it's different now. It's like sometimes you, you meet a person, you already know you're walking on eggshells. And it's like, why? But that's um, you. Guys. First of all, this is the easiest interview we ever had to do. Easy. <laughs> Lay up. <laughs> Damn. Lay up line. <laughs> I think they hard. So, like, no, because no, before I ask the question, you just be talking and you answer the question very well. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. And it's just like, this is top, probably top five easiest ones I ever did. You up yeah. there with Shad. You up there with Shad interview. 
Listen, but, if um, we, when we recorded with him, if it wasn't the fact that we were at a studio and we were on a time, we could have talked to that man all night. Yeah, that's yeah, how, rest in peace, Chad. Yeah, that's how we do it. Conversation. Um, he, he got me into Wally Mania, so God, God bless him. 2017, he's the one who got me into the VIP room. So, Shad, you know, RIP to you. Such a good dude. And just, oh, he just man. Wanted, like, and the, the one thing I will always remember about him, he just always wanted people like us to win. It right. wasn't, it was never about him. It was always like, yo, how can, like, when we when we did the interview with him, he was just like, how can I help you guys? And yeah. we were just yeah. like, it, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. But he yeah, was it, always it, for the people like that look like us, and that he wanted everyone to win. Great so. guy, great guy, great guy. Um, what was I gonna ask you? I'm, I'm sorry. Let me go then. Okay. Um, so, um, I got a question for you. What advice do you have for the young men out here that look like us, that who may be starting out in the um, about to say the rap game, in the wrestling game right now? What advice do you have for them? Basically, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know what it is, is you, and I don't want it to sound cliche in any way, so I'm going to say it in a way that um, is a little more, uh, you know, has a little more uh, flair to it. But you want to never lose sight of yourself, and, and, and you can't give surrender yourself to other people. You can't sell yourself to other people because you should be invaluable. And you should make people see that you're invaluable instead of trying to sell your value or sell yourself. And I think the biggest thing that we can can you explain to, that a little bit more? Can you explain oh, absolutely. That a little, I know absolutely. what you I know what I you mean. The but I want thing that, yeah, the biggest thing, the biggest mistake that we can make um, as a minority uh, in particular is to surrender ourselves uh, or surrender something that we're doing to someone else to. Uh, take a piece to surrender a piece of ourselves because we want to fit your mold because we want to fit how you envision us being because mm -hmm. we are trying to cram ourselves into uh, your box that you have placed. I mean, you put you have a box with my name on it, but I don't live in that box. You know, I've had people that have tried to tell me about my character with their take on the character. And I'm like, what's the, craziest thing, I'll work. what's the craziest thing someone said about your character? Uh, oh, I've had, I had one guy that was like, he interpreted my character as like a, like a player pimp. So like, so, even, so right. So I was, cause I, I had, I had like a, like I was coming out with, you know, I had the suits, I was dressing well. And this was maybe 2013, to around that period and you know I was I had the suits and I was getting into I was wearing you know better suits that were more fitting me I was really getting into myself and my presentation and I had like this nice linen suit that I had that I was uh, wearing and I think that uh he just looked at it and was and he had me with the you know this backstage uh, uh correspondent it was a girl uh, 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 and it was like the and he had a script for the whole thing and like the lines were just along the lines of like me trying to pick her up and then she like slapped me in the face and then I smile at the camera and I'm acting like I'm like like a pimp or something and I looked at him and I was like I was like this isn't you know I I don't know what your interpretation of the character is but this isn't how I envision my character but I mean how can we work and make this work I'm not somebody that's just gonna sit here and be like oh no and rip up a paper or act like I'm a big shot but I was just like you know, you didn't talk to me at all about this before you wrote this script. And this doesn't, this isn't natural. This isn't how I feel. I'm not going to walk up to this correspondent and try to pick her up and get her number. And then she slaps me. I was like, that's my whole thing. You know, I was all about the technical wrestling, all, all about like flashing money, if anything, at that time. I was like, I would have thrown, I could have thrown money in the face before I would have tried to pick her up. It was just, it just was, you were trying to make me something I wasn't. And he was like, oh, you know, I see GQ in you. But I'm like, okay, you see GQ, but you have me playing a pimp to pick this this girl up, and then I, she's slapping me, and then I'm going into a wrestling, match, and then she's not even involved in the match. So it's like, what am I getting slapped for? I, I don't know. I'm one of those people. I like, I, I have a lot of forward sight. I feel so like when you give me, when you pr project something to me, when you pitch something to me, I'm not just thinking about that night or that match. I'm thinking about where it leads beyond there. 
I, I see things in a lot very quickly and in, and in, in short order. So I'm just like, where is this going? What does this mean? If I do this, where like, am I putting myself in a box? And you know, fortunately, I talked to him and we worked it out at the time. But it was just, I've just had people that try to tell me what my character is. They try to make my character something. They try to water me down so that you know it's easy for them to step on it, um, tone it down. You know, don't be this way, don't be that way. Um, that was a lot of coming up more than it is now. Um, but that's the, the message that I would say to people is you got to like, you know, especially when you listen a young black and to be young, black, intelligent and confident. That's scary. That's people are so scared of that. People are so intimidated by an intellectual minority, by somebody that knows what they're doing, that carries themselves. That is. And it's not just black. It's not just a black thing. You could be an intellectual Spaniard. You could be intellectual uh, a Russian. You could be intellectual from Guatemala. If you're not fitting the mold of what they thought you would be, it's scary to them. And that's something that I had to realize. I don't fit molds. I don't fit in boxes particularly. So it's hard for you to put a, a read on me. So you hear these things about me. Then you see me and you see my promos and you see that I'm not cursing and calling you this, calling you that. I'm not treating you, you know, like you may project or may you you may expect someone of my skin tone to act. Um, it's a lot of surprise that might shock that might shock you. It might hit you and you just are like, whoa, I got to get away from this. It's true. I hate to say it, but it's true. And I'm somebody that doesn't harp on the black, white. You know, I don't harp on on race or color, or tone, or creed, because I feel like I can get this far no matter who I am. But at the same token, I have to be cognizant of the fact that I feel that that has accosted me certain uh, 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 positions, you know, that has helped push me back on top of other things. You know what I mean? Because it's he's a young black man with that's intelligent, and he's arrogant, and he's this. It's all so many things that people put into the, the smorgasbord. And then when you look at the, the picture, you're like, yo, I don't want to touch this. You know what I mean? Whereas if one thing was different, maybe I would be more touchable. You know, maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe if, if it was this instead of that, I would be. And, and, and that's the way the game is. It's a hard, cruel, tough game. The game is harder than anything else. The politics, the backstage is harder than the ring stuff by far. By far. And I'm not saying wrestling is easy. But it's the it's the nonsense in the back. It's knowing who's talking about you, who's not talking about you, who wants something from you and who doesn't. You have to stay true. All people trying to get into this business, find who you are and stay true. And if you don't know who you are, find out who you are. Read. Look things up. Watch more wrestling. Attach yourself to certain wrestlers that you like. See what the, what about that connection drives you. You have to find yourself because otherwise people will try and make you. And if you let them make you something, they can break you the same way, the same way. If you fit the mold, one, if you fit the mold one day and they change that mold tomorrow and you can't change into that mold, you're yesterday's news. And that's why I don't do that. That's why I'm. you can't you can't you cannot mold me. You cannot. You can take a picture. You can videotape. But that's the game. I'm just saying. So one thing that you talk about when you talk about the mold is, I think we've been following, I've been following your career since we started the podcast. It's been like a three years. So about three years, yeah. Three years, three years yeah. maybe going on four at this point. And there's one thing that I've noticed about you. You never fell into the high flyer spot, spot, very spot heavy type of mold. Never. Even though that was the direction for a long time the game was going towards. Like, that was the way you got attention. That was the way you got signed. That was the way you got more bookings. But you never fell into that. You continue to to grow at your, your technical, st heavy storytelling as a heel. I've never seen you play a face. So I don't know if you ever played play a face in the back. I could never vision it. <laughs> but I've seen that. I does never. your I would be upset. Cook, does <laughs> does your tour of England, the tour of England that you took, did that play a major factor 
and what and, and you sticking to your guns during this explosion of you know heavy spots in, in the professional wrestling business? Absolutely, and it and it helped me uh, adapt to that high heavy spot style because there are some guys over in the UK that were in developing that too. That was a universal thing. It wasn't just mm -hmm. an American thing. That was the direction that a lot of wrestlers, wrestlers in general, felt like it was going. And that needs to be stated. It's a, it was it was more than just uh, American. It was a universal. People were thinking wrestling was going this way. So there were guys in the UK that were doing that too. Um, but you know, you have to adapt to them. You're wrestling twice a day over in the UK. You know, it was twice a day for a seven day stretch or for a 14, 15 day stretch. Ooh. You're guaranteed at least two matches and you're wrestling different people every time. So that helped me develop very quickly. Uh, and also wrestling in front of that crowd, uh, knowing to, to c take control of a different type of crowd than what I was used to seeing. I was used to what seeing is the crowd like over there. Mm. Oh, the crowd was oh, the crowd's tremendous. I mean, you still have older uh, people in the crowd. You still have kids in the crowd, um, and you have a nice. You look into the crowd and you see diversity, which is you would think in the UK or somewhere else there's not as much diversity, but there's a lot of diversity there. Sometimes more diversity there than I've seen in the New York crowds or in these crowds over here. You know, you, mm. you're seeing ages, you know, seven to fifty, sixty. I mean, there was a, in one crowd. Um, so it was nice to see how they were all uniformly in agreement that they didn't like me, you know, that they're bullying me because I'm doing my job. <laughs> I'm getting out. All, all age groups are like this, this man is a menace, you know, and, and that's what I'm there to do. And I loved it. It was very, very, um, rewarding and it was rewarding to, to my confidence. It was rewarding to where I was at that time, because I feel like 2016 was the year that I really started to become like a main event person. Like I felt like mm. that was where you can put me in your main events and confidently and know that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to deliver, you know, 2015 was a big development year. And then 2016 was like, you know, let's go. Um, so yeah, you guys, I feel like you guys came in at a good time in my career. If it was, you know, <laughs> because 20, 2016, not that it wasn't good before then, but like 2015, like the Rockets were, were get where there was, there was fuel. And then I feel like it just took off with the just, Crusade yeah. campaign, you know, and, and, and 2016. Um, and th again, the UK tour in 2017 helped change me in so many ways. And then when I went back in 2018 for the two week stretch, instead of the one week, I was like, it was just, I saw how different I was. I was like, wow. I was like, I'm, I'm, I've improved so much even from, you know, seven months ago. And I got addicted to that. And I was like, how do I continue to excel, but at a quicker rate, you know, how do I, and little things, little things that I would do. Um, like, I, and that's really what I think is taking me to the next level is that I've really, I'm, I'm scaling things down even more. So whereas a lot of other people are blowing things up, and want more fireworks, more explosions, more sizzle. You know, I'm like more meat, more steak, more like how do I like the every little movement I do, I want you to be watching. Like you're you're punished for looking away. If you try to look on your cell phone, you just missed me do something. You just missed me do something. And you can't get that back. And now you gotta go watch the match on YouTube and look to four to ten, you know, to, to four minutes and six seconds to see what I did because you missed it while you were on the phone. I'm not saying people are that uh, in tune, but the point that I'm making is that I'm, I want every movement to matter, uh, and that's why you talk about guys like Orton because it's like you, the mileage that you get out of the little things, the mileage, the longevity that you get out of control, out of space, out of pacing, out of intellectual movement that's what completes the carter essence is when you reflect what your character is so when you're in there in the ring doing what your character is talking about you have the perfect piece it's not oh well he's talking this way and then he goes in there and if i if i went in there and flew off the ropes i'm a hypocrite if i went in there and started doing dives you look at you what I did and you're, like, you're like oh no that's not that's not the carter i mean Okay, but that's not the Carter I was just listening to. With me, you hear me speak, and then you see how I wrestle, and you're like, oh, this guy. This, yeah, oh, this is it. You know what it is with me. And and to me, that is what you want to put money into, because you know you could put me 
where you need to put me on. I have to be one of the easiest people to book in terms of like uh, what to do with him. But I, I don't know. I really don't know. I guess people, you know, the message boards and the forums, you know what I mean? I don't know. Wait, so do you like, sorry, do you like going on first or going on last? Good question. I love both. That's what's funny. That's a funny question because I feel like most people will say going on last or some last. A lot of people. Yeah, I, I love main event. Listen, the main event is the main event. And if you don't like the main event, then then what's wrong with you? You should like the main event because you're the one that they're building up to. You're the one that all you know that everyone is is building up to. And to be honest with you, I like the main event because they've probably seen everything by the time my match happens. So then when mm -hmm. I do simple, it's like kind of bringing them back to earth. It's kind of like you know, they've seen the fireworks all night, and now they're getting that main event. Now it feels like a main event match because the pacing is different. You know what I mean? So it actually helps me and my character and my and my persona to be in the main event because I can bring something really different. Um, but I really love opening, too, because if I'm opening, I can get the wrestling in, you know, and I can set the tone. And there's nothing like setting the tone. If you can be Bruce the opening just said match, that. If you could be the opening match, set the tone, and then everyone's talking about your match six, seven matches in, they're still talking about it. I mean, that that is a massive victory. They're still talking about your match by the main event. Um, you are in the right field, and you know, to me, I, I'm, I'm either or. You know, some people will say first because they want to get their stuff and get out of there. I don't blame them. Or you want to, or you want to be, or you want to be able to watch all the matches after you. That's fine. You know, I don't know. I, I like both. I hold both. Or when you know you're you're booked for two shows, you know. Or when you're booked for two shows. <laughs> so but, Lucas, you got a question. Either way. It's um I love how you talked about getting um like all you, you spoke a lot of knowledge. You just dropped a lot of jewels low key about in ring wrestling psychology. Facts. But how do you deal with it when all right, you got a match set up with somebody, and then they go, all right, Darius, I'm going to do a 450. Then after the 450, I'm going to hit you with a spine buster. Then I'm going to toss you out the ring. Then, then I'm going to do a Hurricane Rana. Then after the Hurricane Rana, I'm going to do a, a cold red on you. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. They have, like, about 20 spots. How do you, because of how you work, and you're all about the storytelling. You're all about the intricate things about the match. How do you get around that? And how do you have that conversation without coming off like the dickhead or the old, the, the, the overly aggressive veteran? Yeah, and that's that's oh, I love that. Uh, so, <laughs> no, so what's funny? What's funny is, um, and I'm sure I <laughs> I did at some point, but. Um, I, my whole thing is I, I always bring it back to the person and I always say, what's the most important thing to you? You know, so of those five moves of the, the, the 450, uh, of the, uh, Hura Karana, of the dive of this, of that, of those five moves, which of those do you feel you really, which of those are the most important to you? You know, Ooh. you may say the 450, you may say, I really like the spine buster and I got to dive on the outside. So now you have to find a way to make those three things as big as they can be with as few movements, just so it's smarter, just so it's wiser. You also don't know if you wrestle this person for the first time or not, which a lot of the times it is. A lot of the times it is the first time you wrestle someone and they have all these ideas. Um, I, the more you wrestle someone, the, e the obviously the easier it is. But mm -hmm. the, everything just blow, you know, everything just kind of comes together. Um, I think that. You, you got to find a way. So maybe uh, if I was to do an example, maybe, you know, uh, someone wants to go for the 450, um, you know, I, I don't want to get too much into it, but I guess what you can do is you can, uh, if I was just to lay something out, that's fine. So let's say someone goes for the 450 um, and then let's say I'll stop you. Um, I'll go for something on the top because I want it to look important. So I'm going to go for something, you know, you knock me off. You go for something. I move out of the way. I'm outside of the ring now, right? Now you mm -hmm. can get your dive. Something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Now you can, you can get your dive, go in, throw me in, go for that 450 again. I roll out to the other side of the ring. And it's like, I've tried the 450 twice. You come, you know, you come over to me. I fight you off. Here's the spine buster, right? Now you get a cover, nothing. Maybe you go up, 
four fifty, something like that. The point of it is, is I will take, um, I'll try and look, I'll look at the person and I'll say, you know, what do you think is the most important to you? Which of your moves are do you really uh, feel like you're attached to here? And honestly, I haven't had a problem with that. It's easy to break it down if you bring it back to the person. It's easy to, you can't make it about you. I'm not making it about the bumps I want to take or don't want to take. I'm just saying, how can we condense this and make this smarter? How can we make this make more sense to the story? Wow. You know what I mean? Does the 450 fit into the story of what we're doing here? Are we wrestling again? Is there a second match? Is there a third match? You know what I mean? Like, those are the things that are important. Is this your first match here? Do these fans know who you are? Do they know your signature moves so that if you go to the top rope, they already expect you to do a 450 because that changes the whole game, you know, versus you've never done a 450 before. So you're going to go up top. They have no idea. Maybe you need to miss it the first time before you hit it. You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of, you have to play with the person. You can't just, I've never been like, no, I can't, I won't take it or no, that move. Even in my head, if I'm like, yo, that move is no good, I got to find a way to get us to agree to do something else. Uh, and if you're smart, it works. And I'm, I'm, I've not really had a problem with it. So I got to say, I can't uh, I can't really complain. I think the only time I ever had a problem was, honestly, was when I wrestled, uh, uh, when I wrestled uh, ACH back at uh, Tier 1 Wrestling. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, that was that 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 wasn't gonna that was only gonna go one way, and it is what it is. You know what I mean? But um, you don't always have control over how things are gonna go. But you try and make it make sense to the other person, or make it make sense mm -hmm. in a way that they're like, you know what, that that does make sense. I don't need to hit that here. I can hit it later. Or you know what, I can hit this instead because the reaction is the same. It's all about the reaction. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about. Will the crowd care? If you're out here doing moves, but the crowd doesn't care, we're just bumping for nothing. But if I can, yeah. make, if I can make the fans care about a certain move you do or a certain position you get in, that's the one I want to work with. So if I know you have a top rope splash or a top rope for a 50, I might want you to go for that move because I can cut that off. I can cut that off with something, and then you get it back later, and that makes it so much bigger whether you win with it or you don't. You know what I mean? It's I, I like to play the position game. I like to look at a ring and see how many different ways we're using it. So if you have three moves, which move needs me in the middle of the ring? Which one needs me in the corner? Which one needs me on the ground? And I can work with those different positions with my own move set. I'm one of those guys, like, the, people may think, like, oh, or, or you might hear, like, or someone might say I'm selfish or something. I don't know if anyone ever says that. But, like, I'm one of those people that always wants you to get your stuff. I always want you to feel like – I don't ever want to be that match where you feel like, oh, I, I couldn't do it with them because it's him. I couldn't do this mm. because I was wrestling Darius. I never, ever want that. I want everyone to feel like if you have particular things you want to – that you want to get off in, in your mind – we can execute it, but we have to work together to get there. We, it, nice. it's, it's, it's a team effort, and what I do is going to be based off of what you do. You know, I usually – my stuff is usually called after what theirs is. I usually – all right, we know what yours – all right, here's mine because I'm retaliating to your moveset. I can – so I'll have moves that I may think I want to do in a match, and it doesn't fit in the match. And I'm just like, all right, well, I'm not going to do it. You know, some people really have an issue where they have to get a certain thing in their match. I'm not one of those people, you know. So there's some matches of mine where you don't see the Yakuza kick. It is what it is. I have other That's... moves. I promise. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. You can't be insecure. You have to be secure with yourself. And I'm not – I feel like I can go in there with anybody and I can – Make sure that your move set looks good. I can, I can. There are certain moves in particular I actually may want to take. Um, there are others where I'm like, all right, the way that he does this, I don't know. But if he wants to call it on me, I have to know how to adjust. You can't just be like, no, like the whole, like no, that that's that's corny. Be a, be creative. Find a way to gel it in. Don't just turn somebody down. I feel like you know, even if it's like some ridiculous idea, try to get the the basis of what the idea is and work with that. Don't just dismiss somebody because that's disheartening. We all want to wrestle. We all want to get in there and and be ourselves and live our life. We don't want to be in there with somebody that we feel is restricting or constricting us. That's not fun. You know, we come to the locker room, we're like, ugh, we don't want that. 
<laughs> that would be rough. Um, you focus a lot on psychology in the ring. What is one match in your mind, like not the best, but what is one match that you can think of that had the absolute best ring psychology that you've seen, like growing up? Because that essentially led you to, all right, this is kind of the mindset I want to take on when when that time comes. So what's an old school match of, that you think has the, the best ring psychology? So my, my great-grandmother was a big, and, and I, I guess it rubbed off on me, um, was a huge Ric Flair fan. And Come Ric on. Flair <laughs> is, is my number one, my greatest of all time. And, and And maybe not for the same reasons as everyone else. Maybe not just for the robes and the limousines and the pomp and the circumstance, but the fact that he was able to go in there with anybody and make them look like a star and make them look like they were the best wrestler that night. You know what I mean? When you can take go in there with just about anybody and make a, make someone look that good. And it's not even that he was out here having to lose. I'm not saying win, lose. I'm talking about making someone look good. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. I think people need to understand mm -hmm. that. Um, you, when you can go out there with the likes of Barry Windham to Lex Luger to Dusty Rhodes to Harley Race to, to uh, any of these people to, to uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, when you're able to take such a broad spectrum of talent and make them all look like megastars, you're doing it right. It does the moves. Everything else is secondary to the fact that you have taken this person and elevated them to superstardom. It's up to them if they can take it. But if you look at a lot of the start of those guys, Ric Flair was ba was the basis of a lot of their in-ring prominence. Sting, Luger. Uh, I don't want to say Dusty because Dusty was already coming up in his own, but that's the whole Dusty Flair chase in the 80s. Damn. Come on now. He was chasing Flair for years before he finally got him in 86. You know, we're talking about from 80 to 81. Like, that's how feuds were playing out because Flair was so good. So my great-grandmother was big on that, and – that definitely rubbed off on me. I think if there was a particular match, um, you know, and I, it's hard for me to pick matches because I'm such a feud person. I'm such a rivalry person. So, so I was. Okay, so go with that. But, no, but I'll say a match. I'm, no, no, no. I'll answer. Do both. The match, <laughs> the ma the match <laughs> I'll say, I'm not in the game. The match <laughs> I'll say is, yeah, is Flair and Steamboat, uh, 1989 uh, Wrestle War. I'll say. Uh, that match, uh, two out of three falls. It, uh, I mean, when you talk about, I, I don't like to use the word perfect in terms of a match, but though, because there's always a little something, you know, even as a wrestler, you know, I'm not going to say perfect because I'm always going to say there's something I could have done differently. I'm sure Flair and Steamboat would say that, but that match was absolute mint. I'm talking about the trilogy of matches they had in 1989 um, that were with a span of six months with each other. And that cap-off match, that two out of three falls match, and it actually happened before I was born, which is funny enough. So I watched it uh, with, you know, uh, my great-grandmother, and then it kind of just stayed with me, that feud. That Flair Steamboat feud and that Flair Dusty feud stayed with me. And that match with Steamboat, like, oh, my goodness, you know, like, uh, so quality, quality, you, you know, just from from top to bottom, the way the first fall was decided, the callbacks that they had to their original matches, you know, callbacks wasn't a thing that just was invented within the last 10 years. It's all indie wrestlers, you know what I mean? Like, you watch the stuff from the 70s, the 80s, and you'll see how these guys were able to do even less and yet have crowds that were twice as big through the roof, jumping, and and – I'm not saying wrestling has to go back because it's not about going backwards, but accept the past and, and embrace that. I feel like a lot of the current is just let's push the past away. The past is gone. It's on to a new, a new time, a new day. It's like, no, there's a lot of things back then that worked that if you adjust it and fine tune it with the modern twist, you're in money. And I'm, the day that we see that, the day that we have that prominence, which we may be close to wrestling, I mean, this sport, it's undeniable. That's when we'll start seeing kids doing it again. That's When I was growing up, everyone was a wrestling fan. Everybody. 
the 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 recess we go out in recess and we would uh have battle royals and we would pick a wrestler and we would do that like everybody liked wrestling when i was growing up it's not the same now and how do we get it back there because you make wrestling appeal to everybody you give a little something for everyone a, a character for this person a character for that person that's how you got to do it you know what i mean the old school the old school always works you just give it that modern flair. You adjust with the times, and that's how you're money. You don't throw the old tire away and try to make a square. You don't do that. You got to blend it together. You have to. And the you day definitely do. That's it. And then and then we're in, it's so easy, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's egos. That's how you know there's a real problem because we know what it is and we can talk about it, but we're not doing it. No one's doing anything about the it. Yep. There's a secret problem that ain't so secret. So, um, the one thing that I have to say about you is you have embraced the whole what what I like to call wrestlers like you the Mario character, where regardless when you pick him, he got the perfect like he like his speed is in the middle, his strength is in the middle, his jump is in the middle, meaning that you can't go wrong by picking Mario in any game because you know that I, I have a fair chance. So. Right. Reason why that I bring that up because no matter who you're in the ring with, it could be with Paige Mother, it could be with a 500 pound dude, it's always gonna put on a five star classic with you. Like, there have been times where, like, there have been host spots. I go, like, Oh, he's going, he, he, he loses this time. The next thing you know, no, due to this, da, 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 Derek Carr still checking. Yo, out that was, was come on, man. Yo, that was BCW. It was him and Sue. Yes. And I was yes. like, oh, yes. man, oh, he got, oh, it's the little on. stuff. Like, people watch, yo, the way that he was whooping on her, my hey, gosh. Right now, and I think like, the little, little things, like the foot under things. the rope, instead of putting the foot on the rope, I, you know, it's little things that, to me, I go bonkers for. But maybe some people are like, ah, oh, like other people, like you guys notice, and I'll sometimes I'll put a hand under the rope instead of the leg, and it'll just be like, oh, you know, like, like ah, oh, you know, and, and and that's what it's all about. That's what it's, and I appreciate that. That means a lot, you know. I, I'm just, I'm just, again, the little things that make me different, you know. Instead of me hitting a double moon salt or 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 a a a, a, a to the outside. I'm the guy that gets a rope break in the most inconvenient way. It's not the obvious hook the leg. Oh, his leg's right there. He's going to – sometimes I just I just get you with it, and I, the hand is there, and you're like, ah, that definitely got him. That's what I love because I, I want – I almost try to picture myself wrestling, and it's like how would I react to, to someone if I saw them do it? And that's how I try to picture it. And I was like, if I saw somebody do that, I'm like, ah, you know, big championship yeah. match. Drop the guy on his head, hit the big top rope move, hooks the leg, one, two, hand under the rope. And you're like, yo, man, was his hand even under the rope? Was his hand even under the rope? Play the replay. Meanwhile, you're playing the replay, and what am I doing? Getting the rest. Why? <laughs> but, no, I listen, no, it's, I, I'm, I'm all about going in there, and, and I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm not trying to wrestle because that's obviously not it, but it's about being smart. It's about no, maximizing your moments. And if you have a great moment, you got to let that simmer. And the, the, you realize when you watch things like WWE, the replays, it's not that they're replaying everything. They replay the big things. And when they're replaying that big things, those big things, the wrestlers are getting to, to breathe and then to let the fans breathe. Most importantly, let the people watch and breathe so that we can gear up for the next thing. If you just bang, 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 you're tiring me out. By the time you get to the main event, I don't want to watch it. I'm, I'm done. And that's why, and that's why I'm okay with the main event because sometimes I'll have to slow it down to bring it back up. So it, I might have to sacrifice the first couple minutes or whatever. But then again, I also know that I can bring my character to the forefront. You know, maybe that I add something to the entrance in the main event. I, you know, do a stall or something like that. Um, that's how it's got to be. You know what I mean? That's how it's got to be. You have to, uh, you have to adapt to your crowd. And what mm -hmm. I like about, because uh, I'm, I'm always kind of blending the questions. When you talk about no, main event, fine. yeah. When you talk about main event, that's what I like. That's the challenge of it. Is now that you've seen everything, how do I send you home feeling like that was a match? 
And mm. Sue Young was the main was uh, one of the main events of that show. Uh -huh. um, it was because that's when all the girls came out afterwards. So that's how we closed out the show. So you know, to to have that to to have a different match with her after you've seen such great quality because that was a great night of of wrestling. Um, to 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 do that and then have that moment where Sue looked like she beat me. Yes. A lot of people. A lot of Ooh. people didn't. See, they didn't see my foot under the rope. And so it's all it, about like where, as a fan, it's what mm -hmm. side you want. And I always tell people mm -hmm. that even from that first SummerSlam that was here in New York, where it was Brock and Taker. So if you were on the other side of the arena, you never saw Brock tap. But mm -hmm. no, you never saw Taker tap. So you were just like, wait, what? So it mm -hmm. definitely gives that illusion. And I think sometimes in wrestling, as a you know, as a fan, you miss that. You miss that. Like, wait, what? Like. And that, that's mm. that's sometimes the unfortunate part where it kind of then loses its essence and then now it's pointless. So now you're just like, well, fuck, why am I watching this now? So, right. And so, that's, I never want anyone to feel that way. I always feel, I always want accomplishment or a sense of accomplishment. So when I get that rope break, it's supposed to uh, go against what you want. It's supposed to be a go against what you desire. Uh, it's not that you dislike me, but it's also making you love the opponent so much. Because there's two different things. There are people, there are matches where you'll just boo me, but you don't particularly like the other guy. The other guy's got <laughs> to make themselves likable or it's my job to make them likable. That's the match mm -hmm. where I may be a little more verbose. I may be talking a little more uh, uh, smack to. I might, you know, channel you channel your inner Mark Henry if you want to put use uh, modern terms. But listen, I mean, Paul Orndorff used to do it too. So I mean, again, there was just talk. You have to balance to who you're wrestling and to where your crowd is. And if I notice that a crowd is particularly hot for certain things, you know, our match should be smart and should be. Dictated around that, it should be. Smart. We shouldn't just. We shouldn't go out there and, and run into each other like a game of chicken if we know that the crowd is responding to entrances and to certain things. I'm not saying again, don't wrestle. All I'm saying is those moments that we do have those those big uh, segments, make them mean more. Make mm. them mean more instead of building a whole match that's mini segments and then it ends and then you're like, well, what did I really just watch? Yeah, it was fun. It was ten minutes of fun, but when, am I gonna remember that in 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 a, a day? Maybe not. So I, I, I know we have to go. Hold on, hold on. I know we have to go soon, but I want to hear. I want to hear about this new fraction, this new faction that you just put together recently. Can you tell tell us a little bit about it, if you can? Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, the best business bureau, uh, I, I, you know, I don't even know if I can say better business bureau. Yeah, I don't even know if I can say that without you getting sent to C and D. You're right, cease and desist. Uh, they, they throwing L's out here left and right. They sure are. I got, I really got the, and then I got the DM and everything from from Better Business Bureau. Like, hey, you know, we saw your what you did, and we're just letting you know that you know it wouldn't be. Um, wise to continue using this. That's how it was worded. It was. It wouldn't be wise to continue doing this. So, by the BBB. <laughs> so they sent it to me. They sent it to a few of the articles that had posted about it because the article came out so quick because Cassandra Cup was just such a big hit and it was it was trending at the, at the top. It was trending number mm -hmm. six in the United States. So yep. that's how, that's how big Cassandra Cup was. And, you know, to have me and, and, and Billy Dixon and all the things that I was <laughs> doing to that poor, yeah. poor uh, soul that uh, may as well. It, it's not even his anymore. It's really mine. I, that's, I'm really controlling his body because I took his soul a long time ago. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm puppeteering him. Everything you see, every post you see where, yeah, I'm Billy. Yeah, I've been at the string since our first match. So I changed his life. And he can tell you that himself. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, what was the question? I'm sorry. I got so into the, the facts that you put together. Oh, the, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. Right back into no, it. All, so, the best, so the best business bureau. So that's uh, myself. That's Molly McCoy. That's uh, Jordan Blade. That's Eel O'Neal. And that is Killian McMurphy. Killian McMurphy, who just won the Super 8. So congratulations to him. Um, you know, so and we, it, everybody's doing great things there. And the whole point of that group 
is we're not just a collection of people that are just about pro wrestling or pure wrestling. We're not just about character or persona. We're the best of both worlds. When you really look at us, we are gritty wrestlers. We are gritty uh, in that ring. We are technically proficient. You look at Elo Neal. You look at Jordan Blade. Jordan one of the Blade most is by far the for me the one of the best female technical wrestlers I've seen. This is what I'm talking work. about. This is what I'm talking about. Killian McMurphy, who's very underrated with the, with his amateur grappling um, and with his ability to just project. He has such a great. Uh, like he says it with his chest. When he says something, he says it with his chest. And he's coming into himself. He's finding himself, and it's a beautiful thing because there's nothing better to, than to be around people that are cultivating. Because it's only going to cultivate you. It's only going to make you want to step your game up. So you may say I'm on a high level or what have you, but it's only going to make me want to rise higher to be in the presence of people or to be working with people that are finding their way and are in their groove. Jordan Gray, Jordan Blade is in her groove. Eel is in his groove. Killian is in his groove. Molly McCoy, is, Molly McCoy is in their groove. And, and it's magnificent to see. And I just feel like we're all firing on all cylinders, all five of us. So then when you put us together, people are like, whoa. But it also made sense to people. There were people that were literally watching it as it happened. They were like, wow, I, I, I wouldn't have thought it. But it makes a lot of sense. And people were already putting together why we were a group before my promo even came out. People saw the the, the article and everything because the promo came out after. And they were like, all right, well, we're looking at these five people. It makes sense that they would be together. But they're all following Carter. And it's like that's – every like I always have stables. I don't ask for them. I don't sit here and, and politic for – I don't politic for stables. I've never once – asked for a stable it just happens and then i get to lead some of the best like most fun the crusade for change oh we were like it was so much fun and we were so different so different at the time and a lot of guys were getting called up around that time and, and we were getting to wrestle them in their last matches like tony niece right before he was getting called up you know like uh and, and, well i mean sammy callahan didn't go to the e but when he was going to impact oh look at there's that and like we were kind of like gatekeepers were kind of like you had to pass through us to get signed. <laughs> but um but like but but the best business bureau is literally about combining the pu like and, and I'm not I want to say pure wrestling because I feel like that's kind of been overused and people don't even know what that means. Um when we talk about um the actual fundamental technical basics of professional wrestling, it's represented in us five. And when you talk about characters, there's something for everyone between me, Jordan, Eel, Molly, and Killian. There's something for everybody. You want the mm -hmm. you want the straight up technical no nonsense. You can get Jordan. You want that you know that eerie, mysterious, what is he thinking type mentality. You have Eel O'Neill. You want that loud brash over the top. You get Killian. I, which way are we doing? What are we doing here? I think Eel has one of the best gimmicks in the business. Hands down. One of the best gimmicks in the business, in my opinion. I fucking love what he does. See, so there you go. Mr. Black, any last questions before we sign off? No, I don't. This is. I, I'm Arthur. telling you, he's on to something. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Doing so good. Right. Darius? No, hold on. Let's see. Oh, he's like this. He's he he's in the prey of hands. <laughs> <laughs> Darius? Can you still hear me? Now yeah, I hear you. I hear you now. Can. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Are you good? Uh Oh, Sorry. Lord have mercy. Okay, my my uh, oh, laptop was no, dying. You're good. Apologies. Uh, you yeah. So where so where were you? Sorry, you were talked about, about close me out. Here. I, no, no. We, we talked about you were talking about Eel. I wanted to get what yeah uh, what you were saying about Eel because his gimmick and th there's having a gimmick and there's also having the look with the gimmick. 
like the ring gear goes with the gimmick. And he got it together, bro. Like, homie got it, and he knows how to fucking wrestle. So you were talking more about Eel, so. And that's, and yeah, and he and he's finding, not, he's finding himself, he's finding the best avenue for him. He's, you can feel that he's, kind of has a blank canvas and you can feel him choosing his colors and painting with different strokes mm. and seeing which color he likes best. He's not confining himself to red, to blue, to green, to yellow. He's kind of blending. And that's a really fun period to be in because, mm -hmm. you know, I was at that point years back. I mean, now, you know, at some point you find out exactly what you want and you just find ways to turn that volume up as many ways as you can. I think Eel is at that point where he's, cultivating the eel of the future. He's cultivating what he's going to be. And it's beautiful because his mindset is tremendous. Uh, and and I, I really am a big supporter of his. And I'm glad to be to have him in the group. I'm glad to be with him in this group. Um, you look at Molly McCoy, who's another one who I think is probably the hidden gem out of everyone because Molly has kind of done a lot of work with Boomer Hatfield. We've seen, we've seen them in tag teams. Uh, we've seen them all over the place. In different capacities, uh, just wrestled uh, Alley Cat at uh, MV Young's uh, uh, Polyam Cult Party, and they did this in uh, a wet ring, you know. And and, a, and, a, and I mean, it was raining, and the rain the ring was just not agreeing. But they went out there and still put on some quality work. So Molly is like the the hidden gem because I kind of want them to 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 really blossom, you know. Whereas Eel is already Eel is already kind of on that point. I feel like uh, Molly is at a point where uh, they're doing a lot of things, but they need to find that that one. Oh, and then you're mm -hmm. there. You need to hit that switch. And and I and I personally want to help help them find that. You know, I, I always wanted to be that person in someone's career. I want to be someone that you don't forget. I want to be someone that you remember at a checkpoint in your career. I'm not saying I have to stay with you all your life, but I can be, you can be like, yo, you know what? I turned around when I was with him, or I stepped it up when I was around Darius. Whether it was in the ring, whether it was his character, that's what I'm here for. Um, and Jordan, too. And Jordan is, you know... So technically Sweet. sound. I think what Phenomenal. I want to bring out of yeah, what I want to bring out of Jordan is to bring that dimension of like, what you know, why is she with Carter? You know, and obviously you know based off the technical, but also off the mentality. You know, oh, they think similarly, they think the same. That's the type of stuff that's gonna even that's gonna add more layers to Jordan Blade's essence. We already know Jordan Blade is the submission sniper. We already know that Jordan is a tremendous in-ring talent, but building everything else around Jordan is where it's going to be a lot of fun. Where building that aura of like you, you just can't mess with this person, you know? Mm -hmm. That's that's the aura we're looking to build. And then Killian is is Again, another one that's finding his groove. He's doing now. He's getting into the cinematic matches, which he does very well. Um, you know, unlike some people, um, he has a strong. Wow. Yeah, he's stepped up um, in terms of like the microphone. And Killian's a a, a very strong uh, amateur. He's got a strong amateur background. I've wrestled him before, and and he can scrap. So he's another one that can blossom. So the best business bureau is all a bunch of blossoming flowers. And then you have me at, at the helm, you know, kind of corrupting these flowers and, you know, bringing them into the world. So yeah. it, it's fun to have a stable. I, I love stables. I do. I feel like I'm, they always, they follow me around everywhere. Knock on wood. Hopefully really I'll have them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I have a lot of Now you, now you. Now you're doing your thing. I love how, how how nice you put them every single one of them yes. over. That was beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Without and, and I was just like, yep, this is what. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's the thing is not everybody. Like I feel like at times the business is you out for me, and that's where once again that losing of essence happens. Is where now it's me, me, me. Mm -hmm. But you don't give people the opportunity to get over and to have other opportunities, and and you can pave that way for that. So I think. You always being the head of the stable definitely answers that call, that missing link of who's going to help the, the next up, who's going to help that, because essentially then that helps you. 
So, which is why I never understand why people don't help each other. I'm like, if you help me, I help you. So it's insecurity. It's insecurity. That's that's exactly where it stems from. It 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 doesn't come from anywhere else. It's really not, and it's not a mystery. If you can't help people, it's because you're afraid that they're going to take your spot. That's the only reason. It's not that you can't, it's, it, it's that you won't. And my whole thing is I'm not scared of that because I'm, I know I'm going to make it. I know that I'll get to where I need to get to in time. It may take me a little longer for reasons that are out of my control in a lot of ways, but, but I'm going to continue to do the right thing. I'm going to put people on and listen, they might get signed before I do. That's fine. I'm never knocking that. There are people that have gotten signed that I've helped to, to, to do in my way, in my own way, whether it was one night, one month, whatever, I was able to help contribute and then you get to somewhere greater. That is no knock on me. If anything, that's an accomplishment uh, for me to, to celebrate to myself. I'm not going to, I don't have to go out there and post about it on, on social media, but you know, I can like every like how everyone was posting about how they met Nick Gage when the when the dark side of the ring came out. It's like, hey, all right, guys, you know what I mean? Like the whole you don't I don't need to join that crowd because I know that I can I'm doing the right thing. It feels right as lo- and and as long as it's projecting accordingly. And you're sitting here asking me about this group, about the BBB, about the Best Business Bureau. That means. In some capacity, I'm doing something right. If we can be trending, uh, you know, at, at, the, at the very peak, at number six, you know, and I've seen this trending at different places throughout that night, at 10, at 13, at 8, whatever. If you can put people on there, you've only elevated yourself. I've only made myself look better because by having them surround me, we're all we've all boosted Everyone's value goes up. So if mine was here already, it just went up here. I, I don't know why people feel like, oh well, I'm bringing the people here and I'm not going anywhere. It's like, what do you mean? You're you're the leader of something dynamic. You're the you should. It's all this. It's always this. Always going up. If you're not moving up, that's on you. That's on you. Mm-hmm. You can book me. You can book me in a bad situation, but I'm still gonna go up. You can put me in a bad spot. I'm still going to rise. I, I, that's that's the method. That's the method to my madness is that to find is, a way to rise. That is true cream of the crop. All right, last question, and then we are going to sign off. Um, Dream Match, you've done a lot in your uh, career. You've wrestled a lot of people. Who is still left on that list? Is it Randy? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what's funny? I... I'm not one of those people that I don't. I'm not one of those people that wants to like wrestle my idols. That's I don't know. That, maybe that's weird. But like, wow. my no, dream. No, because I think you want to just see them in that light and in and in that point of view instead of like ah, I want to like I can understand. Yeah, like I, 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 listen, I would love to re- listen if I wrestled Ric Flair, if I wrestled Randy Orton, if I wrestled <laughs> William Regal. You know, of course, I'm I'm through the moon, but. You know, I I cherish them in an in a in a in an icon type of way. I cherish them in in, in emulation, in um, style, in performance. Like I would rather kind of be mentored under the mentorship of them than to wrestle them per se. Not that I wouldn't want to wrestle them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because I'm an I'm an alignment guy. So it's kind of like, well, if we're both on the same side of it, you know. Um, so, you know what I mean? So at the end, of, so I would definitely love those matches. Um, don't get me wrong, but it's I just think I'm a little different in that. Like I just would cherish the mentorship. I would cherish the backstage, the communication, the talking, and just picking the brain. Like those are the people that I'd, I'd probably I don't want to annoy them, but I would just be like, you know, if you have William Regal at your disposal and you have guys like Randy Orton at your disposal, how are you not talking to these people? You know, I, I don't know. I would I would just be like like. Listen, like, can you can you watch my match? Like, I, I, you might be busy, but if it's okay, if you could watch my match at some point, or maybe watch it later, and maybe we, you know, we can go over it, and you can tell me what you think. That's how I cherish them. I want to sit there and pick that apart. Like, you know, I would love to, like, Bret Hart. I would love to, like, hey, you know, Bret, like, you know, can we just, you know, just go over and let me know, like, from start to finish, like, how I'm walking, how I'm running, how I hook something. Like, I want to hear that from them. Um, in terms of like an in-ring performance match, mm-hmm. uh, 
I'm, you know what? I'm going to say Mako Satamora, which is maybe a little wild for people, but I think Mako is so proficient. I mean, Mako can make someone again. Like, Mako is, is a killer, okay? But she can make people who maybe you coming into the match, you're like, oh, they're going to get eaten up, you know? The queen of eating people up is Mako Satamora. But then, like, she'll make you, you know, she can make you look competitive, She'll you kick her in the head. She'll she'll take it a certain way. We're like, oh my god, wait, is she really hurt? Like little mm. things like that. So I think it would be Mako. I think if it was like grand stage pomp and circumstance, I would have loved to have wrestled Undertaker at WrestleMania. Mm. Um, I would have loved. And listen, I win lose, I don't care. Tombstone finish, but like it would have just <laughs> been. So much, it would have just been a lot of fun to have my character against. His, I think the the Carter and the resourcefulness of Carter. I think there would be a lot of fun in terms of like making trying to almost not make him get him to make it to Mania and like almost try to win by forfeit, like just little Weasley things. You know, I'm the first entrance, and it's like you know he might not edit, maybe turn it, bringing up people from his past or like there's just so much creativity that I feel would be in a build to an Undertaker feud. It's not just the match, it's the feud. So, I mean, I would love something like that. I would love, I would have, I would have loved, because obviously it's, you know, whatever, but I would have loved to have had that. Wrestling is never say never. So we gonna leave it mm -hmm. at that. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not enjoyed Mr. Darius Carter, you can absolutely come and see him live and in color May 29th. At Next May, week's Saturday, the right? Franchise rain. Thank you. Um, yep. in Ritual Park, so tickets are on sale once again. Battle Club Pro. Um, uh, Miss Darius Carter, please plug yourself. Let the viewers and listeners know where to find you. Any upcoming shows outside of May 29th, if you also want to tell the world, by all means. Yeah, so uh there's obviously the next. I have a, a taping that's uh, I'm going to be doing this Saturday, the 22nd, but it won't be coming out for some time. So there's that. Um, like I had posted recently, I have dates, uh, thankfully, by the grace of all things great, uh, until going into August, into early to mid busy. August. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I have that. I have the 29th, which is. Um, of course, Battle Club Pro made the franchise reign. I'm going to be in the 16 person tournament to crown the second ever uh, franchise champion. Uh, I'm the I'm one of only two people in this tournament that were also on the first show. The other person oh. being the other person being Matt McIntosh, who's on the other side of the bracket. So mm -hmm. wow. let's see if he makes it because I'm going to make it uh, and I'm winning my title. Um, so that's going to happen. I mean, it's due. I mean, Anthony Bowens was the first champion. He won it in a five way that I wasn't pinned in. I, I have the best win loss record in battle club. So I can't wait to finally have that title over my head and end all conversation and speculation. Um, that's awesome. the 29th. Yeah, that's the 29th. And then, Oh, pro wrestling magic. Uh, that that '90s party will also be airing on IWTV uh, that day as well. So the 29th is going to be two of those things: Pro Wrestling Magic, uh, as well as um, the two events that Battle Club Pro will be running. Um, and then there's going to be several bookings after that. That you know, at this point, you should look at uh, my uh, Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, uh, all slash Mr. Darius Carter. They're all three of them are the same. It's just Mr. Darius Carter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, slash Mr. Darius Carter. You'll see all the dates that are coming up. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, some of which, uh, uh, you know, I can't say right now. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I can't just but, be dropping that and not uh, give something. But... We do have some things coming up, like the Paris is bumping uh, on July 10th, mm -hmm. which is my birthday. Um, so I can, I can. Are you a cancer? He's a cancer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's there. Uh, I can throw a that. Nice one out. cancer. I don't know. Yeah. Know. Okay. All right. So there you go. That's you know the best astrology like sign. You, but anyway, Mr. Black is a cancer too. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, listen, Cancer Club, man. You know, <laughs> we we got we got a lot of love in our hearts, man. You know, uh, not easy to understand, but misunderstood. But what's the world without enigma? 
You know? <laughs> Bars. Bars. Ah, but Bars. check that out. You'll see all the dates. They're all coming up. Um, I kind of want you to focus on the ones that are coming up now. I don't want to throw a bunch of dates out because that's that mm-hmm. just makes me sound busy. Like, of course I'm busy, but that just makes – I'm just throwing it. No, no, but you know what I mean. It's like I'm just throwing seven, eight, nine things at you, and then it's like you're not even catching up. And it's like, ah. So at this point, I'm going to give you a reason to look at the social media to actually engage uh, with Darius Carter. But, yeah, the, the 29th is going to be a huge one, um, and we got some big things coming up in June. And, and – uh, Pro, pro, pro Wrestling Magic, Camp Leapfrog, if we want to start naming some promotions. Uh, we have Warriors of Wrestling. Uh, we have some uh, – ooh, I can't say that one. Ah! You know what? It almost ha- – You guys want up? <laughs> I got it. That's why I look at the watch. I say, wait, see, I can't. I can't. See, no. I can't with him. He got to go now. No. So, that is, <laughs> please make sure to, no matter what you might have thought about this man here, he is definitely a gem to the business. So, mm-hmm. please make sure to follow him in his endeavors in this business because it's not easy orders to, to go through. Um, if you haven't seen a match, go on YouTube. Make sure to search Mr. Darius Carter. Make sure to check out some matches previously. So now when you see him on May 29th, you're like, okay, this is what I'm in for. Or you may think you know, but you don't know. So I got a match for y'all to check out. My personal favorite, Darius Carter versus Sonny Kiss. Check uh, that match out. The one uh, that was before Sonny left. Sonny, like, uh, yep. We were there live. We were there we live. There. That was for the uh, that was the uh, Warriors of Wrestling Warriors in Brooklyn. Rest- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I won the championship, when I won the yeah. Warriors title, mm-hmm. Sonny. Uh, I don't listen. I'm not gonna sit here and say who's the best person I ever wrestled, because I like different people for different reasons. But Sonny Kiss, uh, we wrestled each other three times, and those all three of them were different. And we get it. Like, we know which match to put out at a particular time. It's just, Sonny's mindset is in, immensely underrated. I think people, all right, you get, you know, the, the character and the glitz and the glam and, okay, you know, and the kicks and the splits. But, like, people really need to understand, like, the mental acuity of Sonny. Sonny is a very smart professional wrestler. And getting in there with him, it's it's magic every time. I wish I could get a Sunny. I can get Sunny for three minutes. I can get Sunny for ten minutes. I can get Sunny for twenty. We know what we need to do. So that's that's a big. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend that too. I appreciate putting that match on. No, so definitely so. But thank you so much for joining. This has been thank well you, overdue. Man. But like we always say, everything happens for a reason and in great time. So thank you so much for joining us on this special edition of the JTP Lounge. As we mentioned before, May 29th, you can see Mr. Darius Carter along with our other guests we've had the last two weeks. So we definitely wanted to give everyone a platform to just be able to come, chill, hang out, have fun. This is, you know, this is what we do. We do it for fun. We love wrestling. So let's just get to know each other a little bit different. So I hope everyone that tuned in learned something new about Mr. Darius Carter because I do think you give off that that first image. And I think a lot of people, once they really get to know you and understand, it's a total different mindset. Mm -hmm. Total different. So I definitely think everyone should... Give my man a chance. Come on. <laughs> but anyway, I, Listen, I, I a totally a totally different monster, but still a monster. Still a monster, yeah. Still someone you gotta watch over your shoulders. Um Hello. exactly. But um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'm Gina from HR here with Sir Ruckles and Mr. Black. Hashtag black excellence, hashtag we are out. Peace. Is over, got the hands in motion. If you go with rolling, no need to focus. Traveling states and over oceans, you gotta wait till your coast chosen. Trying to have lines outside the show, like every part of releases that bronze and noble.